Good afternoon, everyone. Today I'm chatting with David Ellsley from Cardiol Therapeutics. Cardiol is a clinical stage life sciences company developing anti-inflammatory therapies for heart disease. Their lead product, Cardiol RX, is an oral solution designed to treat conditions like recurrent pericarditis and acute myocarditis. This is our first interview with David, so we get a quick overview on what these diseases are, how their solution works, and we get a breakdown on what investors should be expecting out of the company if they're looking for those events that can really move the stock. All right, everybody, enjoy the interview. David, thanks for joining us. Pleasure to be here. Nice to see you, Steve. So, David, I want to start off kind of high level, sort of setting the stage for what Cardiol is up to. And I thought it might be good to just sort of talk about pericarditis and what it is and sort of how it might compare to myocarditis, which my understanding is you guys are sort of working on both. Uh, but but let's start off with pericarditis. Uh, how, how how would you describe it? Uh, so pericarditis is, um, it's, it's a miserable disease. It impairs quality of life in very healthy people in their prime of life in their 40s and 50s. Uh, it's really, I, I guess, uh, in simplistic terms, it's inflammation in the sac that surrounds the heart, which can cause fluid buildup around the heart. It causes chest heaviness. It causes severe chest pain. Uh, it's debilitating. Uh, people really, really, their intervention is immobility. They're asked to not exercise because when you increase heart rate, it increases pain and the chest heaviness. Uh, you know, it's if you want to put a face on pericarditis, uh, Lundquist, the New York Rangers goalie, he's probably the most noteworthy. Uh, Tony Braxton was another uh, in famous individual with pericarditis. It's um, Lundquist ultimately quit hockey because of pericarditis, because of the the chest pain and the and the chest heaviness and the limited treatment options. The real challenge with the disease is the way you manage it when it becomes uh, in its more advanced stages is patients really have a choice of either steroids or a very potent immunosuppressive medication that can increase risk for infection and perhaps other medical challenges. And it's also a very expensive medication. It's 270,000 US dollars per patient per year. I think it's the most, the most expensive medicine, I believe, in cardiovascular disease today. Wow. Okay. I didn't know that. Um, uh, what's, what's the total addressable market for pericarditis, uh, look like? Uh, so about 5% of hospital admissions with chest pain are pericarditis. So it's, uh, almost 200,000 people are affected annually with pericarditis. Uh, and of those, a subset of those patients continue to get the disease back over and over again. So I'd say the lucky ones, uh, you'd stabilize them in the ER, they'd be discharged and they'd be okay. But tens of thousands of patients each year, the disease can, keeps recurring. It's called recurrent pericarditis and it's very debilitating. It impairs your quality of life for several years. The recurrent form is more prominent in women than in men. And the disease can run six years uh, during which your life is uh, really put on hold. So you you mentioned uh, the two sort of treatment solutions right now that exist, but what can you tell me about the research that's uh, ongoing right now to study pericarditis? I, I understand you guys are in stage two of trials, which we can get into in a minute, uh, but is 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 this a a a field where there's you know um dozens of companies looking for solutions what's 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 out there in terms of what's being tried i would say un unfortunately there aren't dozens of companies it's um it's a complex uh disease process it's caused by inflammation primarily that uh, is not self-regulating and the inflammation continues to uh, impact the heart. It's most probably caused by a viral infection. Uh, that is the 
the known or the uh, suspected cause of most pericarditis. You get a virus invading the the heart, the heart muscle, the sac around the heart, the immune system does its job. It goes after the virus, tries to kill it, and ends up causing this inflammation and fluid buildup and chest heaviness and severe chest pain in these patients. Uh, I think from our perspective, uh, why we're uh, so excited about uh, our involvement for patients and for the cardiovascular community is we've developed a small molecule oral drug therapy uh, that can interrupt that inflammatory cycle. We believe it could be disease modifying. Uh, patients may only require the drug for one to two years. Uh, they take it twice daily. It manages that chronic inflammatory state and uh, prevents them from having to go on these very potent steroids or injectable immunosuppressants that are both expensive and come with some real toxicology and safety concerns. So let's talk about your stage two trials. Uh, what can you tell us there? Is it how, how many people are in the study and what kind of uh, results would merit a success? Uh, so we have uh, we have announced uh, at the American Heart Association uh, in the oral presentation that our drug not only impacted the disease at the eight week primary efficacy endpoint, but the impact on the key symptom, which is chest pain, was sustained out six months. So it's. It's, it's wonderful to have a drug that can impact a key symptom of disease, such as intractable chest pain in these patients. It's a whole other game-changing phenomenon if that impact is sustainable. And not only did we impact the disease very quickly, meaning our oral drug brought the pain down uh, in a very substantial way inside of five days, which is remarkable. Uh, but that impact that was observed just five days in uh, was sustained out six months. And that data was accepted for presentation at the one of the largest cardiovascular conferences in the world, which is the American Heart Association that uh, just took place in uh, Chicago. And our data was one of the feature presentations there. We also impacted C-reactive protein, uh, which is a blood marker of uh, inflammation. So when C-reactive protein is elevated, it is a signal uh, that there is systemic inflammation uh, that is invading the cardiovascular system. And we had a uh, real striking impact on reducing that biological marker. So not only are we improving the key symptoms of disease, we're also improving the inflammatory state in these patients and we're preventing that recurrence phenomena from coming back or that chest pain from returning so it's a it's a very exciting day for patients exciting day for cardio so when i look up cardio rx if i'm putting on my investor hat i'm, I'm wondering if you'd help me understand what what's the difference between cardio rx and just taking cbd it's really the strength so in medicine, everything is about dose and strength. Uh, so for example, if you go to an airport, you can get 200 milligram ibuprofen or Advil. You can't, but if you have severe chronic pain, some people need 600 milligrams, some people need 800 milligrams. You need a prescription for that higher strength. So the same applies uh, in the cannabidiol field. So we have developed a pharmaceutically manufactured pure formulation. So our formula is derived from organic chemistry or chemical synthesis, as opposed to botanical extraction. So a lot of cannabidiol oils, for example, are extracted from botanical source. Uh, that can lead to impurities in the formulation. Uh, it's very difficult to stabilize the formulation. Uh, and it's very difficult to concentrate the formulation at ultra high dose. So if you think about a cannabidiol oil that you may purchase uh, at certain points of care, uh, you might be receiving 10 milligrams, 30 milligrams, 50 milligrams, uh, whatever the dose may be. The patients in our trials are receiving 1500 to 2000 milligrams. You need to get up to that ultra high dose to get the impact on the severe 
cardiovascular uh, disease symptoms. So our real innovation and contribution to this important area of medicine, first and foremost, the medicine was approved in rare pediatric epilepsy syndromes and is preventing brain damage in thousands of children each year. So it's a remarkable medicine in the pediatric setting. Cardiel's contribution is we were able to connect with that safety base. We created a pure formulation that is man mass manufacturable so we can make it accessible and price it such that it's accessible to patients. And we can deliver it in a dose that is truly therapeutic. So patients can, with these severe cardiovascular conditions, they can receive the dose that is necessary to uh, impact their disease therapeutically. So David, you've been involved with biotechs before, and uh, typically uh, we, we don't have a lot of biotech companies on here, so uh, forgive me for asking this question, but my... My view on it is that there's these sort of, we, we might even call them binary events with biotech stocks where you're kind of waiting for an event to happen and it either happens or it doesn't. And it basically is a tremendous catalyst for the stock. What are those events that I'm looking for if I am an investor in Cardiol or I'm watching Cardiol? So those events uh, are really the clinical trial results. I mean, we're fortunate to be in late stage development. We've just uh, uh, five, six weeks ago announced a late stage phase two, three trial, which we believe can accelerate our path to market. A typical uh, cardiovascular medicine can take, you've heard timelines, seven to nine years from concept through to commercialization, sometimes longer. Uh, we're fortunate to be developing this in fast track eligible indications because they have orphan designations. So uh, the FDA enacted a policy to speed new medicines to market for rare diseases. And these rare diseases are defined as any disease that affects less than 200,000 Americans. We were awarded the orphan drug designation in February of this year, which provides Cardiol and our lead drug candidate with up to seven to nine years market exclusivity post-commercialization. It also waives very significant regulatory fees associated with developing the medicine. And it also puts it into a faster development path or development lane because rather than two phase three trials, most orphan drug designations, only orphan diseases only require one phase three trial. So we've just entered that last stage of development with our advanced program and we could see uh, this product available for delivering results to support regulatory approval as early as 15 months from now, because there's a very high demand from patients, from cardiologists to come up with alternatives to steroids and immunosuppressants that are limited by their side effect profile. Many of them have to be injected. Patients don't like injectables if there's an oral treatment option. And payers don't like paying $270,000 a year if there's an alternative medicine with an extraordinary safety profile that comes in at a price point, 20% of that, for example. So, just to make sure that I'm following. So in 15 months, you guys might be granted the ability to commercialize the drug. Um, uh, when, when will we be looking at uh, trial results? Uh, so trial results, uh, we have the data that's just been announced at the American Heart Association. We have a second program you mentioned in your original or your initial remarks about myocarditis. So myocarditis is a related inflammatory heart disease. So pericarditis is infl inflammation in the pericardium, the sac around the heart. Myocarditis is inflammation in the heart muscle itself. And it's a particularly tragic form of cardiovascular disease because it affects younger people still. So pericarditis affects people in their 40s and 50s. Myocarditis predominantly attacks people in their 20s and 30s, mostly young, healthy men, many of them athletic. You may have heard about athletes that die suddenly during sport. Sometimes that is a myocarditis attack that can lead to sudden cardiac death. So myocarditis remains without a treatment. Uh, there's no standard of care. So there's no FDA approved drug or EMA approved drug or Health Canada approved drug for the treatment with a label for myocarditis. 
Uh, so really, if a young person presents with chest pain and they see this fibrous uh, tissue on the heart uh, to confirm that diagnosis, and that does not spontaneously resolve in the ER and becomes persistent, some can develop heart failure in their 20s, they can require heart transplant, and tragically, many of them die. Uh, we have one of the largest programs ever conducted and now in over 30 years in myocarditis. It's a global trial. It's now fully enrolled in the US, Canada, Latin America, Europe, and Israel. It's a true global effort sponsored by the foremost experts in myocarditis care. Uh, that study is fully enrolled and that is due to report in the first quarter of 2026, or sorry, first quarter of 2025. Uh, so three, four months from now, uh, we have another exciting clinical milestone in the leading cause of sudden cardiac death in young people. We believe that will uh, really cast additional attention on the uh, incredible efforts uh, the Cardiel team and our advisors and clinicians are working on for these new important developments. What's the bigger opportunity right now of the two? Like is are we kind of just sort of seen that the data now, my understanding is that myocarditis is largely impacted by long COVID. Uh, so we're, we started to see a real spike. Do you, are, are you more excited about that in terms of an addressable market than the pericarditis? I think we're, e we're equally enthusiastic about both indications as well as our potential and heart failure. So uh, heart failure is really one of the leading causes of death and the number one reason people are hospitalized in the developed world. Myocarditis is sort of a phenomenon, young people's heart failure. Uh, heart failure in advanced age is a big, big, huge problem. 26 million people affected, it's caused by diabetes, obesity, and hypertension, and there's no end in sight for those underlying drivers. So the real enthusiasm we have is we have this very unique small molecule intervention to interrupt the inflammatory cycle in these tragic young people's heart failure syndromes and these uh, pericarditis, these very debilitating cardiac indications, those on their own can be uh, economically, they can be billion dollar markets for an organization like Cardiol. Uh, but there is a much larger challenge out there, which is heart failure, which these can be uh, the, the gateways to these it's called proof of concept. We show an impact on inflammation and fibrosis in myocarditis and pericarditis. Uh, those can be very re rewarding for patients, cardiologists, as well as shareholders of Cardiol. But there's a much bigger opportunity, much larger door that opens because those are also proof of concept for heart failure, which at any one time affects 6 million people in the United States and causes more hospital admissions than really any other uh, disease challenge. Hey, well, David, thanks very much for hopping on here and um, updating us on Cardiol. Uh, hopefully you can keep coming back on here in the future as we hear more about you guys rolling out on your strategy and some of the data coming in. And uh, it sounds like if, if you guys are successful at uh, accomplishing this, it's gonna be a really good thing at a really important time in the world. So. Uh, uh, we 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 wish you the best of luck and let's chat again in the future that's great thanks for having me on steve all right everybody thank you for watching if you enjoyed this interview please smash that like button subscribe and ring that notification bell guys also let us know what you think in the comment section thanks everyone